uh, you know, and and I get it. Basketball is is obviously a a more um, concise sport when it comes to total time to play as opposed to football and baseball, which, you know, are always going to be around that three to three and a half hour mark. But still, man, some of these late tips are killer. And I get it that, that Creighton and Tennessee are going to be on Friday night. That's a little bit different as opposed to a Sunday night. But, man, you know, it, it's uh, it, it can be a little bit uh, tough to stay up for some of these late games. I know we talked about college football and, you know, moving their kickup times up for, like, the national championship and stuff, given the fact a lot of people have to go to work the next day. Um, you know, I wish college basketball would maybe be a little bit more in tune with something like that, um, knowing that not everybody wants to stay up past midnight watching some of these games. But um, regardless, uh, a great weekend of basketball. They've stuck around to watch all of it um, on the men's side and obviously the women's side, as well as the two tournaments are running, um, you know, simultaneously. And, hey, if you're not paying as much attention to the men's tournament anymore because South Carolina got bounced, that's more opportunity to, play, to pay attention to the women's tournament as uh, plenty of action going on there. And if you watched South Carolina play their two games this past weekend against Presbyterian in North Carolina, I, I mean, looking as good as they've ever looked. I don't think there, there's any better way to describe it. They are locked in. They are 100% focused. You know, we, we go back to now uh, two weeks ago and the uh, SEC Women's Tournament, and South Carolina looked vulnerable in a lot of ways. All the turnovers against Texas A&M, they were um, obviously trailing Tennessee until the miracle shot back to Cardoso. Um, you know, uh, a tight game with LSU a lot of the way in the championship game on that Sunday. And, and I don't think we were necessarily concerned for South Carolina coming away from that, but I think we kind of looked at it and said, okay, well, there's some vulnerabilities that they've shown for the first time this season or for the first time uh, pr over a prolonged period of time this season. And, um, you know, you wonder what a week and a half off for them was going to do before jumping into tournament play and it turned out to be extremely beneficial. They, uh, they locked in on Friday taking out Presbyterian as we knew they would that game wasn't a concern to anybody really that's a team that you beat by 70 points you know back in December and I think we all felt that South Carolina would be able to win that game with one arm tied behind their back and you know two players on the court if you really need, needed to and certainly didn't have any trouble but but North Carolina presented a, a different challenge after they had gotten past you know Michigan State in in the first round themselves where it's like, okay, this is a team that South Carolina went on the road to early in the season. They were trailing late late in, late in the second half of that game. And, um, you know, there was at least a blueprint there for North Carolina to maybe make this interesting against South Carolina, and uh, that did not end up being the case. South Carolina absolutely um, demolishes them in the first quarter of that game, and that was pretty much all she wrote from there. South Carolina wins both those games over the weekend, a combined 179-80. to 80 which, if you're keeping up, is the largest difference by any team that has played two games so far in the NCAA Women's Tournament. Uh, they'll wrap up second round action uh, later on today to find out who makes the Sweet 16 for uh, them. And South Carolina is awaiting to find out who its opponent for the Sweet 16 is. Um, uh, again, coming up later today, you'll have the rest of the games in the second round. Elsewhere, baseball with a clean sweep of the weekend against the number three Vanderbilt Commodores out there at Founders Park. Uh, you can't understand how huge this is. I was worried coming into this weekend um, about what baseball could be up against if it dropped another series to Vanderbilt. Um, obviously, you went on the road last weekend. You lost two out of three against Ole Miss. Obviously, game three was better. It's the one that you won, and um, offense looked a little more awake in that game. But nevertheless, when you lose your first series and then you're getting set to play host to a top three team in the country who had just demolished Auburn the weekend before, there's concern. And when you think about the SEC, and this is where my concern really came from, you lose your first series, you're at risk of maybe losing your second series if you don't straighten things up, and then you're going on the road to Tuscaloosa in a short week starting on Thursday, um, you know, for a Thursday through Saturday series. You can't win the SEC 
in the month of March, but you can certainly lose the SEC in the month of March if you got yourself in a hole of two series and then went into a must-win going into Tuscaloosa, which is a tough place to play, as every place is. Um, that's not a recipe for success, and that that's a, a hole you'd be digging yourself out of as the season went along. So South Carolina could not afford to drop a second series to start off uh, – to start off conference play and boy they played like their hair was on fire all weekend long um or really over the course of two days because friday got postponed he had to play the doubleheader on saturday which that in and of itself being able to sweep a doubleheader is uh is very impressive because that's one of those things where you can also think like okay well they might split this one team gets one game one team gets the other and then you have a rubber match coming up on sunday but south carolina takes care of business on Saturday and then just puts the cherry on top of the performance they had Sunday to complete the um, complete the clean sweep. And I don't think it can be understated how impressive winning the series is, let alone sweeping it, especially when you look at Vanderbilt's offense coming into the weekend where eight of their nine starters were hitting over 300. Davis Diaz was the only one under... 300 and he had gotten seven RBIs in his last nine games dude was still hitting the ball very very well just the numbers didn't necessarily um you know reflect that but South Carolina went out there and played their best baseball I don't think there's any a better way to describe it and that all starts with the pitching if you don't if your pitching's not performing um you're gonna have a tough time winning games and in game number one Eli Jones goes out there and has a no hitter working through the seventh inning and you, you really feel for a guy when he gets that late in a game. And uh, he was the first, run, uh, first batter of the seventh inning that ended the, uh, ended the no-hitter. And, you know, I, that's a little bit different than maybe getting to the eighth or ninth inning and it happening. But once you get two-thirds of the way through a game, and I know as a pitcher, your ear's not supposed to think about those things, but you know it's in the back of his mind as he's going through, like, the third fourth and fifth innings and then he completes six innings without any hits and he goes into the seventh inning it's like man only nine more outs and i got this thing and then you give up the first tip to start off the seventh but nevertheless an amazing start for a guy like eli jones who had routinely been giving up a fair amount of hits in his last couple starts mitigated the damage as far as the runs allowed though um but goes out there and just pitches an absolute gym on um on saturday sq in game number two wasn't uh, bad necessarily only got three innings of work um started running into a little bit of troubles so they went in and pulled him so that's not necessarily a terrible thing um you know who knows what it would have looked like if he went another maybe two innings there and then tyler pitzer uh, what can you say about him dude in his as a freshman in his first start against the number three team in the country goes out there and just has an incredible incredible performance um and um you know may may have earned himself a weekend starter role going forward. We'll see what Coach Kingston and the company ultimately decide to do. But fantastic outing for Tyler Pitzer in his first ever college start. And then, as we've kind of come to know, the bullpen goes out there and uh, has a very, very strong showing themselves. I've said this over and over again. I think I'm going to anoint myself the president of the Tyler, uh, or excuse me, the uh, Garrett Ganey Fan Club as a dude pitched twice on Saturday in both games and was very, very efficient through uh, his multiple innings of work there. So shout out to, to, to Garrett Ganey, con- con- continuing to be the best player at the bullpen for, um, you know, for South Carolina. Um, at, at, uh, ultimately, on the offense, though, um, for South Carolina, the top of the lineup hit the ball really well which was an issue last weekend against Ole Miss and something that you definitely needed to correct. And uh, they went out there and certainly did that on Saturday. Or excuse me, on Saturday and Sunday, which again helped them uh, ultimately lead to the full sweep of the weekend. And as I mentioned, a short week. You got a road trip to Tuscaloosa on Thursday. You got to play Presbyterian tomorrow night. So can't overlook that by any means. But a uh, short week, a busy week for South Carolina, but um, feeling a lot better going into this short week um, coming off of a clean sweep as opposed to if you had dropped at least two out of three against Vanderbilt. And again, you kind of be in desperation mode heading into Tuscaloosa. We'll hear from uh, Coach Kingston, get his some of his thoughts from the weekend 
and uh, what he saw was good and, um, you know, his thoughts on some things. It is the Extra Point Tower Head along with you on your Monday morning here on The Game. The Game Network. The home of the Gamecocks. 107.5 The Game in Columbia. 100.5 The Game in Florence. 100.3 The Game in Myrtle Beach. Also on the 107.5 The Game app and streaming live on The Game TV. Listen to Gamecocks baseball on The Game. And if a Gamecocks batter hits a grand slam, you could win cash. You could win cash. You could win cash. You could win cash. In the Palmetto Citizens Federal Credit Union Grand Slam giveaway. Go to 1075thegame.com and register. Brought to you by Palmetto Citizens Federal Credit Union and the game. Broadcasting live from the Herndon Chevrolet Studios, this is 1075 The Game. A great selection of new Chevys is available now at Herndon Chevrolet. The lot is packed with inventory and more is on the way. So shop your hometown Chevy dealer today. Stop by or shop online today and see why Herndon Chevrolet makes you smile. Had some rain that came in over the weekend. As I mentioned, Friday night's baseball game got postponed to Saturday because of it. If you have a crawl space under your home and you were maybe concerned with the amount of rain that we did get, you might have some standing water under your home. High humidity and condensation in your crawl space creates an environment for mold, mildew, and pests, including termites. That moisture can lead to things like wood rot and floor joist problems. Musty smells or awful odors can come from mold mildew in your crawl space, and that might cause health issues to you and your family, like runny nose, itchy eyes, or coughs, because up to half of the air that you breathe in your home comes from your crawl space. If you're having any issues with your crawl space or your home's foundation, you need to check out our friends at Canty Foundation Specialist. Go online to cantyconvixa.com and schedule an appointment. Again, Canty Foundation Specialist at cantyconvixa.com. They'll get your crawl space and your foundation fixed up just right. Cantyconvixa.com. Honey, would, would you take a seat? I, I have a confession to make. What is it? What's wrong? Well, I was out driving today and I saw some hookers on the side of the road. A bunch of huge, professional, beautiful looking hookers. So I did what I was supposed to do. I slowed down and I moved over. You slowed down for the hookers? Well, yeah, it's the law. There was a whole fleet of Schroeder's towing trucks assisting with an accident. Wait, what did you think I was talking about? Schroeder's towing reminds you to slow down and move over for all first responders. <laughs> Schroeder's Towing, the best and fastest hookers in town. Tartan Day, you might just learn a thing or two. We can't wait to see all of you at Tartan Day. What is Tartan Day South? For the last 12 years, thousands flocked to the historic Columbia Speedway for the main event. Nine acres of lush green grass filled with Scottish and Irish fun as far as the eye can see. Highland Athletics, incredible Celtic concerts, food and beverage vendors, birds of prey and sheep herding exhibitions, and so much more. More. But don't take my word for it. Experience Tartan Day South, built by Culpepper Wood for yourself. Saturday, April 6th. Enjoy all of the great bands at the amazing Celtic concert at the Ice House Amphitheater in Lexington. Friday, April 5th. And the main event is Saturday, April 6th at the Speedway in KC. Festival information and tickets are available online now at TartanDaySouth.com. Tartan Day. You might just learn a thing or two. We can't wait to see all of you at Tartan. Oh, Gunner here with the mortgage guru, Jacob Crowder from First Palmetto Bank. If the new year has you in need of a guru in this market, Jacob will get you taken care of. Just a few years ago, he helped me, and I personally recommend him and First Palmetto Bank, who's owned and operated right here in the Midlands. Jacob has local decision makers, which means quick and precise processing and underwriting. So if you're looking to make a move, give Jacob a call today, 803-719-1005, or email him at jcrowder at firstpalmetto.com. Thanks, Bill. It's nice to have the band back together. Interest rates have stabilized as well as the local housing market. Now is a good time to buy a house. At First Palmetto, we have products to help home buyers keep payments down. Also, if you're considering building a home, we have a no-nonsense construction loan to fit your needs. If the new year brings change, we can help you. Give me a call, 803-719-1005. Great news on the housing market having stabilized. So that makes it a good time to buy? Absolutely. That sums it up, Bill. Call Jacob Crowder today, 803-719-1005. My MLS number is 198432. First Palmetto is a member of the FDIC and the Equal House. Lender. Powered by Integrated Media, the Game TV. Sponsored by Shepherd's Glass, a true reflection of quality. The Game TV. Sponsored by Shepherd's Glass. 
Hit us up on the Firehouse Subs text line. 803-404-6100. Your home of the Gamecocks in Columbia. 107.5 The Game. Also heard on 100.3 The Game in Myrtle Beach. And 100.5 The Game in Florence. The Extra Point with Tyler Head and Gamecock Central on your home of the Gamecocks in Columbia, 107.5 The Game. Also heard on 100.3 The Game in Myrtle Beach and 100.5 The Game in Florence. Mr. Brewer here with two outs and the best is empty and he hits this one in the air left field. Backing up on it is Lenev. He's at the wall. He leaps. It's gone. Well, that'll snap the skid. There's the seventh base hit of the day for the game. Cox, an opposite field home run for Dylan Brewer to cap off a really nice weekend at the plate for the Latin native. Welcome back in. It is the Extra Points Hour Head along with you on your Monday morning. That was Derek Scott on the call. On the Game Cox Radio Network, Dylan Brewer with his third home run of the season yesterday against Vanderbilt. Again, one of many, many runs that this team scored over the weekend to help them <clears throat> complete the uh, series sweep over the, at the time, number three Vanderbilt Commodores. We'll get to some ranking updates here in just a minute, but it was indeed a very great weekend for Dylan Brewer as he uh, hit 400 with uh, two RBIs, uh, quite a bounce back um, after going one of 13 versus Ole Miss last weekend. And with his impressive weekend overall, he's now surpassed Kennedy Jones with the best batting average on the team as he now jumps up to a 346. Kennedy Jones hitting at 333. And uh, Kennedy Jones, one of his um, lower end performances of the weekend, which is weird to say because he did end up uh, getting a couple RBIs over the course of the weekend, but um, only hit uh, 181. Um, did go 0 for 4 on uh, Saturday or the second game of Saturday, um, but uh, went 1 of 3 on game number one and then 1 of 4 in game number two. So. Again, still hitting very well overall for the season, but Dylan Brewer does end up passing him in the um, in the uh, overall team batting average so far. And uh, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, the top of the lineup was of vital importance. It's always going to be of vital importance anytime you want your offense generating a lot of runs, and that's something that was very um, concerning last weekend on the road at Ole Miss is that, especially in game number one, the off top of the, the um, you know top lineup wasn't doing much of anything, and um, you know b- b- seemed to have corrected itself by the time um, you know Sunday's game rolled around. But you wanted it to be consistent. You needed the top of your lineup to hit well over the course of all three games of a series, and, and that's exactly uh, for the most part what we ended up getting um, over the course. Of the weekend, as I mentioned, Kennedy Jones did only hit 181 in that third spot, did end up bringing in uh, two RBIs, one of those being a solo home run. But two guys in particular that, um, you know, are, are vitally important are the two preseason All-Americans for South Carolina with Cole Messina and, um, you know, Ethan Petrie. And we obviously know what their abilities at the plate are, as we saw so much through um you know, all of last season, and when those guys struggle, the the rest of the offense is most likely going to struggle as well. And I think you look at last weekend against Ole Miss. Yeah, Ethan Petry had the home run, but ended up hitting 166 with seven strikeouts against the Rebels uh, on the road last weekend. Then Comasina went over completely, no hits against Ole Miss over the course of the three games on the road out there in Oxford. But those guys. Certainly seemed to correct things this past weekend as they were uh, two of the most productive um, offensive weapons that South Carolina ended up, ended up having against um, um, against Vanderbilt. They all they both RBI'd in all three games and uh, combined for three total home runs over the course of the weekend. We'll go cut number 13 here, Dave. This is um, you know Coach Kingston talking about how when those guys play well, the rest of the team follows suit. Sure, for sure. Uh, you, you, when all Americans play like all Americans, everybody else can kind of be really nice, complimentary players. And look, we want to have a lineup one through nine, and, and I think on a lot of days we do. But 
when you have dudes, you want them to play like dudes. And those guys were really big for us. Uh, he, he, going back to last Sunday, this is not just something that started this weekend. I think it started last Sunday. We took it into Tuesday, and we carried it in this weekend. So uh, right now, I think we're, we're in a good place. Again, uh, just need to keep it going. When your best players are playing up to their abilities, I think it creates a sense of calm for the rest of the lineup where guys around them don't feel like they have to pick up the slack and say, oh, well, our best, you know, our best hitters aren't performing how they usually are, and now I have to overcompensate and do this or do that. Um, I think it creates a sense of calm through the rest of the lineup, and I think we saw that over the course um, you know, of the entire weekend. As I mentioned, Petri last weekend only – you know, two of 12 with seven strikeouts, which, again, with Ethan Petri, we know it's kind of been feast or famine where it seems like sitting a home run or striking out. Um, you know, but last weekend was especially rough. And then Comasina to just not get any hits over the course of three games for, again, somebody that was a, a preseason All-American, um, you know, is a, is a tough pill to swallow. But, um, you know, you transition this past weekend and they combined for 10 of the 26 RBIs over the weekend. Um, so nearly half there. And uh, just great performance all around for um, for them. On the pitching side of things, uh, once again, the Sunday starter was listed as TBA, which is um, kind of the norm for South Carolina this year so far. And I, I get it even more from the standpoint of, of having a doubleheader on Saturday, not knowing how many pitches you're going to need or what you're going to go through with those guys um to to really know what your options for sunday are going to be and i think that speaks to the depth of what south carolina has as a pitching staff that you can put tba uh on your sunday starter because you have so many viable options that could slide into that role i've seen it up uh, going with uh, tyler pitzer who's been very solid coming out of the um you know coming out of the bullpen this season so far and in his first career start um you know, goes three and a third and uh, uh, um, goes three and a third before giving up his first hit and then has nine strikeouts on the day. I, I mean, I can't think of a better debut as a starter than, um, you know, what we saw out of him, um, you know, what we saw out of him on Sunday, which is a tall task for a freshman. And, and we'll go with, um, uh, we'll go with a cut number. 12 here, Dave, and, and Coach Kingston talking about having confidence in starting a freshman yesterday. I think number one, you have to sign and recruit talented players that have the ability to do that. Um, but then you also have to show confidence in them when, they, when you feel like they're ready. And I think it's really important that, that the coaches figure out the right time to give them their opportunity so that they are set up for success. I think Pitzer had earned it uh, through the fall. We just saw a lot of growth from the fall into the spring and now in the real games and just felt like it was the right time to give him that opportunity. And so when we give the opportunities to guys, you want to see him run with it. And you, you saw an example today of a guy that really, really ran with it. And then Becker again was outstanding coming out of the bullpen. That's a daunting task to to go out there in your first start against a top three team in the entire country in Vanderbilt, but obviously was uh, was up for the challenge and, and performed very well there. And we'll see what the uh, what the thinking is for this upcoming weekend against Alabama again because of Easter next Sunday. Everything moved up today, where you'll be on game number one Thursday, game two Friday, and then game number three on saturday so you're talking about one less day of rest um for these guys and, and we'll see if we have another tba going into the weekend or maybe if pitzer has earned himself that uh weekend starting um you know starting role and uh you're going on the road to a team at alabama that's coming off of getting swept this past weekend against georgia some very entertaining games out there in athens um georgia won with the walk-off in one of their games on uh, saturday i believe um so you're looking for at a bama team that's going to be looking to get things back on the right track uh, i mentioned a few minutes ago d1 baseball and the latest rankings that have come out with the uh, getting swept <clears throat> over the weekend Vanderbilt drops from number three down to number seven. No change at the top ahead of them. Arkansas and Oregon State still occupying the one and two spots. Clemson now jumps up to number three after being number four last week. Uh, rest of the top, uh, so most of the top ten still occupied by um, SEC teams. A&M at four, Tennessee at five. Florida at six, as I mentioned, Vandy at seven. LSU at number eight. And then South Carolina after... 
losing the series to Ole Miss. He drops out of the top 25, jumps right back in this week at number 18. Um, again, after being unranked this past weekend, Auburn drops out of the top 25 after being 23 this um, you know this past weekend, and Kentucky uh, jumping in at number 24 after not being ranked last weekend themselves. Alabama, as I mentioned, South Carolina's punt for upcoming weekend, sitting at number 16 right now. So a top 20 matchup taking place in Tuscaloosa a little bit later on this week. Um, South Carolina first has to take on Presbyterian. That game coming up tomorrow afternoon tomorrow evening i guess um first pitch at 6 30 pregame coverage gonna be starting right here on the game at 6 15 as a south carolina will look to uh roll the momentum from the weekend hopefully into another midweek win taking on the presbyterian blue hose um while south carolina was out of the s the uh, ncaa tournament this past weekend on the men's side of things a lot happening around the ACC and conversations about the uh, SEC, or excuse me, a lot happening around the SEC over the course of the tournament. A lot of conversations coming away from it as well. We'll dive into that coming up. It is the Extra Point. Tyler Head with you on your Monday morning on The Game. The Game Network. The home of the Gamecocks. 107.5 The Game in Columbia. 100.5 The Game in Florence. 100.3 The Game in Myrtle Beach. Also on the 107.5 The Game app and streaming live on The Game TV. Powered by Integrated Media, The Game TV. Sponsored by Shepherd's Glass. A true reflection of quality. The Game TV. Shepherd's Glass has provided commercial, residential, and auto glass installation, repair, and replacement to Columbia for over 50 years. Large retail storefronts, auto, custom shower enclosures, and mirrors for that remodeling or new construction project. Visit shepherdsglass.com to see and learn more. Now with two locations on Platte Springs Road in West Columbia and Chapin at 855 Chapin Road. Shepherdsglass.com. Shepherd's Glass, Shepherd's Glass, a true reflection of quality. No one likes to talk about the injuries, pain, disability, and lost loved ones that result from terrible car and tractor trailer accidents. I'm Jason Reynolds. At the Samuels Reynolds Law Firm, we're honored to be the lawyers our clients rely on during their toughest moments. And I'm Steven Samuels. When a work injury disrupts your life, I work hard to get you the medical treatment and workers' compensation you depend on. Samuels Reynolds. True injuries, true lawyers. 803-779-4000. The Cocky Trout 5K and Fun Run and Walk, presented by Palmetto Shirt Company, is back. Join Gamecock fans on Saturday, April 20th for the fun-filled morning racing around Gamecock Park in williams Bryce Stadium. Learn more and register today at GamecocksOnline.com slash Cocky Trot. Hey, everyone. It's Chris Clark. Garnet Trust is hoping to build the best and most sustainable NIL program in the country. To find out how you can get involved, go on over to GarnetTrust.com. You can support Gamecock athletes there, get access to exclusive content, and help Garnet Trust build the best NIL program in the country. What you're talking about. Brought to you by Love Chevy. Act now for spectacular savings on the best selection of new Chevys. I-26 at Harbison and at lovechevy.com. Together, let's drive. Sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Progressive makes bundling easy and affordable. Get a multi-policy discount by combining your motorcycle, RV, boat, ATV, and more. All your protection in one place. Bundle and save at progressive.com. Coming up April 5th, you don't want to miss another golf tournament with 107.5 The Game. That's right, it's the Spring Golf Tournament at Charwood Golf Club. Call today and reserve your team's spot. $400 per team. We'll have breakfast, we'll have lunch, and we'll have all your favorite celebrities from 107.5 The Game. So come on out to Charwood Golf Club. April 5th, that's a Friday, 10 a.m. tee time. Call today, 803-755-2000. That's calling Charwood and reserve your spot today. Pete Wine Pool and Spa is the area's award-winning vibe fiberglass and gunite pool builder from design to installation the pdl wine team will be with you every step of the way from a standard rectangle to an exotic backyard oasis pdl wine is the builder to call on-site consults are free the name is ale wine two beverages ale and wine pdl wine pool and spa we're on sunset boulevard in lexington you'll find us on facebook and online at pdlwinepools.com I like daffodils, tulips, the big dinner plate dahlias. I loved being in the garden, but I wasn't going to be able to because I couldn't not only walk, but I couldn't really stand on my foot without being in pain. 
it was excruciating. So my husband said, let's go to the Good Feet store. For over 20 years, we've helped people like Terry live the life they love without letting their feet get in the way. This nice young man said, I think I can help you. He got the arch support and I was fitted. And I kept walking back and forth across the store and I looked at my husband and burst into tears because it was the first time in a year that I have not had any pain in my foot. I have had no pain since the day I bought them. Now I can do whatever I want. There isn't any place on my property that doesn't have flowers blooming 365 days a year. I still can't believe it. My name is Terry, and that's my Good Feet story. See what we can do for you with a free personalized arch support fitting at the Good Feet store. Stop by the Good Feet store in Columbia near Whole Foods for a free fitting. Call 1-800-NEW-FEET or visit goodfeet.com. Worry less about spring cleaning and call Zeros Carpet and Air Duct Cleaning. Mention me, Bill Gunner, at 107.5 The Game, and you'll get three rooms of carpet clean for $129 plus a free hallway. Book online at zeroscolumbia.com. What you're talking about. Sponsored by Love Chevrolet. On your home of the Gamecocks. In Columbia, 107.5 The Game. Also heard on 100.3 The Game in Myrtle Beach. And 100.5 The Game in Florence. We didn't expect them to go away ever, ever. Uh, listen, this was not, you know, it's funny, I heard Jay Bellis say some things today. Give Yale credit for making those plays. This has nothing to do with us not taking them seriously, nothing. They outplayed us in many ways, in many categories. They made shots, you know, they guard us. Welcome back in. It is the uh, Extra Points Hour Head with you on your Monday morning. Looking back on the weekend that was, which included a lot of college basketball in the NCAA tournament, that was the voice of Bruce Pearl, head coach of the Auburn Tigers, as they got bounced in round number one by Yale, 78-76 to 76 on Friday. And, um, you know, I, like many people, thought, that this might be the year for Auburn to make the Final Four run. Um, I hadn't been my Final Four. I'm sure a lot of people did. Um, and they end up tripping up on not an easy team in Yale, who won the Ivy League on a buzzer beater um, a couple weeks back to earn their spot in to the uh, NCAA tournament, but one that, from a talent standpoint, should not have been able to match up with Auburn. And going back to what Bruce Pearl said right there, the accusations coming away from the game, and the players will never admit it, Bruce Pearl's never going to admit it, that Auburn didn't take this team seriously enough. Auburn was looking ahead to round of 32, Sweet 16, whatever it may be, saying, ah, we got... Yale, we can beat that team with one hand tied behind our back. Should not be um, should not be an issue, but it was an issue. And when push came to shove at the end of the game, Yale ends up uh, being able to eke out the win. Um, again, seventy eight to um, seventy six. Auburn very bad with turnovers. Every or everybody uh, on. Um, Auburn's um, roster that day, with the uh, exception of Chad Baker Mazar, who got uh, ejected for a flagrant foul, um, and that's a whole another story. Everybody else had at least one um, turnover in the game, including Janai Broom with four. Though he did lead the team with, um, you know, with 24 points, and you know, th- there's a reason why people thought. This might finally be the year for Auburn just because of what kind of regular season and SEC tournament they had put together so far. Um, They had dominated everyone. 26 of their 27 wins were by double digits. The one exception being the seven-point win they had over Mississippi State um, last weekend in the SEC uh, men's tournament. Every other game. They had handled their opponents pretty easily, including two games against South Carolina where, um, you know, they beat them by 40 and 30 points. Um, Friday was a different story. And that kind of metric 
I feel like can maybe give you a, I don't know, maybe give you a false idea of a team like that to where, yes, they are dominant when they win. But when they get in close games, it's a different story. That's exactly what happened on Friday where Auburn, if they play up to the standards that I think most people expect them to play up to, they should have been able to handle this Yale team by, what, 15 or 20 points? But the fact that you let them hang around and it's a scrappy team with nothing to lose, that's how you get yourselves in these situations. And Bruce Pearl, and rightfully so, is being questioned a lot right now because it just seems like he can't out. The, and hey, they made that Final Four back in 2019. That was the game they had. Um, I think it was the the crazy miracle shot at the end of regulation against New Mexico. I want to say early on in the tournament. Let's see here. Um, but outside of that one run, it's been pretty ho hum results for. Bruce Pearl in the NCAA tournament. Let's see here. Uh, New Mexico State. That's what it was. New Mexico State in round one um, where uh, Auburn very well could have lost that game. Uh, Of course, they ended up losing to the eventual national champion, Virginia, in the the final four. But outside of that, Bruce Pearl the year before got bounced in the second round. In 2022, bounced in the second round. 23 bounce in the second round, and now 2024, the first ever round one loss for the um, for the Auburn Tigers. Um, and I, I talked to one of the Auburn insiders last week, and um, you know, I asked the question if he thought that Bruce Pearl was a good tournament coach, and you know, there was certainly a debate to be had about that. Now, again, they ran rough shot through the SEC tournament last weekend, dominating everybody as they'd done all season with the exception of Mississippi State, which ended up being their closest game as far as wins go of the year. But, um, you know, now they're sitting home watching the rest of the tournament uh, for a team that very well could have made a Final Four run again. Um, So I don't know what to think of Bruce Pearl, but these past couple years have not been kind to him in the tournament, especially with the great teams he's been able to bring into it. Speaking of which, on the flip side of things, Of course, Kentucky losing to Oakland in the first round on Thursday. We touched on this a little bit on on Friday, but as expected, the fan base up there in Lexington, Kentucky, not thrilled with John Calipari at the moment. Shocker, right? Um, Not thrilled to the point that there is going to be some kind of decision made sometime this week um, about John Calipari's future as the head coach at um at Kentucky Matt Jones from uh, Kentucky Sports Radio was on a Twitter space um over the weekend and and addressed the um rumors about what the future of Calipari as a Wildcats head coach is going to be and he went on to say John Calipari is coming back tomorrow um he's uh, talking about Calipari um, believe spent the weekend in um, in New Jersey, but we'll be back on campus in Lexington today. So it says Calipari is coming back tomorrow. My assumption is whatever happens will probably take place tomorrow evening or tomorrow late afternoon. Because of that, I suspect we won't know anything until late Monday or Tuesday. So the conversation is at least being had. Does Kentucky want to keep John Calipari around? And I don't think it's a foregone. Con- I don't think it's a foregone conclusion to say yes. Now, look, he's one of the most accomplished head basketball coaches in college basketball right now, and is routinely taking Kentucky to the NCAA tournament. But just taking them there is not enough. And look, early on in his tenure, Elite Eights, Final Fours, national championships, these became the norm. But in the past handful of years, um, they went to the Elite Eight in 2019. Obviously, COVID prevented the 2020 tournament from happening. Since then, they've not made it past the second round, including twice getting bounced in the first round like they did on Friday against Oakland. It's one of those things where it seems like maybe it's run its course. Maybe it just doesn't quite have it to make a deep run in the tournament anymore, despite the fact he's got amazing players year in and year out, 
you know, future lottery picks the whole nine yards, which makes a loss to Oakland all that more frustrating because, like, how do you lose to these kind of guys? Um, but it sounds like a decision is going to be made. If they do decide to fire him, it's going to cost him $33 million. That's what his buyout is. Pretty hefty. But with how passionate and um, involved the fan base is up there in Lexington, Kentucky, if they really want him gone, I imagine they will find a way to find that $33 million if that is what they want to do. Now, where do you go from there after firing him? I don't know. And are you risking maybe a, a couple of seasons of maybe rebuilding a little bit? I don't know. Because, again, he's been there for almost 15 years now. So what does the change of scenery look like, and, and how does that affect the program? Remains to be seen if they decide to move on from John Calipari. And, uh, again, should have some news coming out sometime mm, today or tomorrow on, on what they ultimately decide to um, decide to do. I want to remind you about the 1075 The Game app. Just go to your respective downs, uh, app store, give it a download, and you can listen to us wherever you go, across the state, across the country, and across the world, as well as check out The Game TV, sponsored by our friends at Shepherd's Glass. Go to YouTube.com, search The Game TV, subscribe to us, and uh, again, check out each and every one of our shows weekdays here from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on The Game TV, sponsored by Shepherd's Glass. Come back and wrap up our number one of the extra point. Tyler Head with you, Captain Dave producing on the other side of the glass on your Monday on the game. The Game Network. The home of the Gamecocks. 107.5 The Game in Columbia. 100.5 The Game in Florence. 100.3 The Game in Myrtle Beach. Also on the 107.5 The Game app and streaming live on The Game TV. Download the 107.5 The Game app and listen anywhere. The beach. The gym. And yes, even there. Go to iTunes or Google Play and snag the 107.5 The Game app. This is Boomer Science with the CBS Sports Minute. Sponsored by LL Flooring. LL Flooring, every step covered. Referee Tommy Harris was benched Saturday at halftime of Chattanooga NC State. Now, Paris had attended Chattanooga, causing a background conflict. This oversight wasn't an upset because, of course, the NCAA was heavily favored to screw up something in this women's tournament. I'm Boomer Science. At L.L. Floyd, we've been a trusted partner to pros for over 30 years. With over 400 nationwide warehouses full of in-stock, job-ready inventory, you'll get what you need. And our exclusive pro pricing means that pros never pay retail. Because at L.L. Floyd, all we do is floors. So we're going to do it right. Sign up for a free pro account today to start getting pro benefits. L.L. Flooring, Every step covered. You're going to feel a puff of air. Jong's Optometry oh. has set their sights on staffing up. Try the next line. Hey, Kim, can you tell our 2 o'clock we're running 15 behind? Sorry, we're a bit backed up today. He needs an optometric now, technician to keep an eye on it all. <sighs> Where are the dilation drops? Indeed can help him hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. A lot can happen between falling in love with a house online and owning it. Between imagining living there and breathing in your new home for the first time. Having an advocate who can help you navigate the complex world of financing, inspections, negotiating, analyzing the market, and talking through any anxieties that may pop up, that can make all the difference. That's what the expertise of a Realtor can do for you. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors and bound by a code of ethics. Because that's who we are. Meet Cheryl. Hey. She's on vacation and lost in the moment. Unfortunately, so is her Chase debit card. <laughs> it's got to be somewhere. Maybe she lost it at Salsa Night. These skirts should have pockets. Or maybe she lost it at Pilates. Three and two and... But uh... she's not worried. With the Chase mobile app, she can lock her card till it turns up. Tools that help protect. One bank that puts you in control. Visit chase.com slash checking. Chase, make more of what's yours. Chase mobile app is available for select mobile devices. Message and data rates may apply. JP Morgan Chase Bank and a member FDIC. eBay Motors is here for the ride. 
120,000 miles of night drives, daily commutes, and who knows how many. Are we there yet? Through countless fixes, elbow grease, and a new radiator, you kept your ride alive. With eBay Motors, you have over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Is this house a good price compared to others in the area? Are prices going up or down? If I don't make an offer right this very moment, will I miss my chance? These are just some of the questions a home buyer might ask. And these are the sorts of questions an agent who is a Realtor can help answer. Because Realtors have the expertise, data, and access to specialty training to help you navigate the process of buying a home. They provide support, guidance, and have your back every step of the way. That's what Realtors do, because that's who we are. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. Point. With Tyler Head, Tyler and, Gamecock Head and Gamecock Central on your home of the Gamecocks in Columbia, 1075 The Game. Also heard on 100.3 The Game in Myrtle Beach and 100.5 The Game in Florence. Welcome back in. It is the X Point Tyler Head with you on your Monday morning. Remind you once again about the 1075 The Game Spring Golf Tournament coming up at Charwood Golf Club on April the 5th. That is a week from Friday. It'll be Final Four weekend, so a whole lot going on. If you want to take part, it's $400 for a foursome, $200 for a pair. 10 a.m. shotgun start. You're going to have giveaways including USC baseball tickets, Carolyn tickets, concert tickets, and our craft beer passport. If you want to take part, give Charwood a call, 803-755-2000. Again, 803-755-2000 if you want to register for the 1075 The Game Spring Golf Tournament. I um, asked uh, y'all earlier at the start of the show, with South Carolina being out of the NCAA Men's Tournament, does that affect your ability to enjoy the rest of the tournament? Do you, do you watch less? Do you watch the same? Does it have any effect at all? Justin weighs in and says, as a South Carolina fan, I've heard, I've learned to love the tournament. Without South Carolina, we don't, uh, we don't ever make the thing anyway. Um, LOL. I think that's a good way to look at it. And, you know, from the standpoint going into last week where, and look, we broke this game down in a whole lot of ways. We knew it was not going to be easy for South Carolina, but we saw a path right a blueprint for how south carolina could theoretically beat oregon um to get themselves at least to the second round and i i feel like i because there were a lot of people that were you know rightfully just disappointed and saying ah, i can't believe we made it to the tournament only get bounced in the first game um I, I feel like if south carolina were to make it at the second round then everybody i think would probably be in agreement that hey that that's fantastic anything past this is gravy um unfortunately south carolina did not make it that far but that doesn't take away from what an amazing season it was what an incredible job lamont paris has been able to do in just two short years at south carolina um so far but but yeah when you look around the the rest of college basketball and knowing that uh the games no longer affect you um i, I can see how that can hold a bearing on maybe not um not enjoying the rest of the tournament as much because that's what made the regular season so fun is as opposed to last year everything mattered every every game in the conference mattered because okay well if this team loses this week and this team wins this week that affects south carolina as far as the standings go and we're looking at you know bracketology every single week and seating and all that kind of stuff it just it gives you a reason if you're not a already diehard college basketball fan it gives you a reason to care about everything else because it ultimately comes down and affects the team that you cheer for. Same thing with the NCAA tournament where Creighton had beaten Akron earlier in the day. And it's like, okay, well, if South Carolina can get past Oregon, then you got this matchup with Creighton, and we'll see how that goes. But, um, again, unfortunately, South Carolina could not get past Oregon. And then uh, Dana Altman um, uh, takes Oregon into the round of 32, and uh, they end up losing in double OT to Creighton so valiant effort for them and, and Jermaine Kustard had another incredible game uh um um Nefali Dante another incredible game like those uh guys just 
playing their best basketball when it really counts in an NCAA tournament, unfortunately for them, coming up a little bit short. Uh, Captain Dave, I have to ask a question of you. How big of a fan were you of the Baylor Bears last night? Well, for last night? Yes, for last night. Yes. Yes? Big. Simply yes? Yes. Unfortunately, coming up a little bit short. Um, Very unfortunate. Now, I'll pose the same question to you. With South Carolina not being in it, does that turn you off from watching the tournament more, or are you just... Yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm not really big on it really now. Now, the fact that now Clemson's punched their ticket to the Sweet 16 after beating Baylor last night, they'll take on Arizona, that game coming up on Thursday. Will you avoid watching because Clemson's in the Sweet 16, or are you just going to watch to see who can beat them? I, well, I'll probably watch to see if someone will beat them and be very happy when it does happen. But really, the women are, the, are it for me. That's this fair. whole whole year the women's tournament is exciting great and i'm excited about it yeah i I mean i think we all share that sentiment especially when you watch south carolina dominate the way that they did this past weekend i think you know the the presbyterian game we knew was probably gonna be a blowout but to do the same thing against north carolina yesterday that was a little more of a surprise i feel like um yeah well if you compare it to the last game that they had together yeah certainly it's a bit of a surprise that North Carolina didn't play him better. Did you see the North Carolina guy tweeting that it's all over for South Carolina before the game started? Well, he wouldn't be the first one to say that kind of thing. And, you know, that's why they have that freezing cold take Twitter account that always comes back and bites you with those kind of things. So don't count your chickens before they hatch. Right. But I, I really love the, you know, there, we have villains in the women's game. Oh, that that's what makes it so fun is you have characters, you have villains. So trust me, I'll get to Kim Mulkey in a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot more personality in the women's game. Yeah. All right, hour number one in the books. We will dive in to some women's basketball. Let's hear from Coach Staley uh, reacting to what was a dominant first two rounds of the NCAA tournament for them as they punched their ticket to yet another Sweet 16 that's all coming up in hour number two. It is the Extra Point. Tyler Head with you on this Monday on the game. One oh seven five. The game broadcasting live from the Herndon Chevrolet Studios. Discover Herndon certified. Herndon Chevrolet is premier used car warranty. Shop with complete confidence, knowing Herndon Chevrolet has got you covered. Stop by or shop online today and see why Herndon Chevrolet makes you smile. There's something remarkable about the University of South Carolina. It's in the labs, where researchers are discovering ways to make communities healthier and stronger. It's in the nation's best first-year student experience and top-rate programs in nursing and health sciences. It's where more South Carolina students have access to higher education than ever before. Because when you stand for something bigger than yourself, you can create something that benefits us all. Behold the remarkable we. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA approved treatments for GA and go to gawontwait.com. 
TEC Equipment Rental is hosting their grand opening for their new location in West Columbia on April 12th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's at 2025 Old Dunbar Road. Come on out and check out their extensive line of equipment. With manufacturers on site, you can learn about equipment straight from the sources. There'll be giveaways and door prizes. Also, a food truck from Hudson Smokehouse. 107.5 The Game will be broadcasting live with ticket giveaways and more. So come on out and see how TEC can serve you. That's April 12th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at 2025 Old Dunbar Road, West Columbia. Hey Gamecocks, Ben Cato, third generation owner of Cato's Power Equipment. We are thrilled to be offering brand new rental options in 2024. With the lineup of push mowers, stand on and walk behind aerators, deep thatchers and zero turn mowers, most tools start around a hundred bucks a day to rent, push mowers only $50. We have weekly and long-term rates available, so come borrow our tools and expand your ability to get your work done. Find out more at catospowerequipment.com or in person at 4012 West Beltline Boulevard. Get out to Charwood Golf Club today. Bill Gunner for my great friends Rock and Daniel Lucas. Charwood is one of my favorite courses to go and visit. Take my son Austin and go hang out and play a round of golf. You need to do the same. Call today for a tee time. 803-755-2000. Your golfing friends at Charwood Golf Club are ready to host you and have a great day doing it. So call. Line up that tee time. 803-755-2000. That's Charwood Golf Club. Honey, would, would you take a seat? I, I have a confession to make. What is it? What's wrong? Well, I was out driving today and I saw some hookers on the side of the road. A bunch of huge, professional, beautiful looking hookers. So I did what I was supposed to do. I slowed down and I moved over. You slowed down for the hookers? Well, yeah, it's the law. There was a whole fleet of Schroeder's towing trucks assisting with an accident. Wait, what did you think I was talking about? Schroeder's towing reminds you to slow down and move over for all first responders. Schroeder's towing, the best and fastest hookers in town. It's postseason basketball time, which means it's time for some watch parties cheering on the Gamecocks. And nothing beats a watch party spread of delicious firehouse subs. Whether it's a small party of five or you've invited the entire neighborhood, Firehouse Subs has you covered. Order in advance online at firehousesubs.com or tap on Rapid Rescue in the Firehouse Subs app, which is your best way to get great Firehouse rewards. Be the champion of your watch party this season, only with Firehouse Subs. WNKT-FM, East Over Columbia. This is Tony Annan, head men's soccer coach at the University of South Carolina. You're listening to 107.5 The Game. Home of the Gamecocks. A cumulus media station. The Extra Point. The Extra Point. The Extra Point. The Extra Point. With Tyler Head and Gamecock Central on your home of the Gamecocks in Columbia, 107.5 The Game. Also heard on 100.3 The Game in Myrtle Beach. And 100.5 The Game in Florence. Ten o'clock, the tower number two of the extra point. Tyler Head with you on this Monday, Captain Dave. Producing on the other side of the glass. Want to uh, remind you once again of the Paul Pando Citizens Federal Credit Union Grand Slam giveaway. Uh, each and every baseball game, $25 gets added to the pot. And when a game cock hitter finally hits a Grand Slam this season, you could be the winner of all the cash in the pot, uh, thanks to Palmetto Citizens Federal Credit Union. The uh, pot currently at $600, still waiting on that first Grand Slam of the season. Thought we might get one over the weekend. Did not end up happening, so more money added to the pot. Go online to um, 1075thegame.com each and every week to register for your chance to win. Again, all of that, um, all of that money. Um, South Carolina... Uh, punches their ticket, the women at least, punch their ticket once again to the Sweet 16 after making fairly easy work of um, their first two opponents in the NCAA tournament this past weekend. And look, when we talk about the women's team, we kind of know what to expect in a lot of regards when you look at the matchups for some of these opponents. Um Presbyterian coming in on Friday, and and this is no disrespect to the Blue Host. Congratulations to them for making the NCAA tournament, beating Sacred Heart in the in the first four game. They they had to know what to expect coming into play South Carolina, 
for a second time this season. And give them credit, they didn't get beat by 70 points this time, so I guess there's some improvement there. But, look, we knew South Carolina was going to go out there and um, and uh, and mop the floor with them. And that's exactly what they did. And, you know, when you talk about the women's game, uh, the, the difference in talent between the, the – the top of the top level and the um, not necessarily the bottom level, but those teams that come in as the 16 seeds and stuff like that is uh, is a very wide margin compared to what the men's game is. And that's just a statement of fact. That's not an indictment on the women's game. It's just that the top programs have, you know, the best talent, uh, the best of the best talent and the, you know, team 64 and, and around there are a little bit more middle of the road, which is why you don't really have as many upsets in the women's game when you look at the tournament overall. So we knew South Carolina was going to go in there and, um, you know, and dominate Presbyterian as they did again, beating by 52 points on, um, on Friday. It's what happened against North Carolina. That was a little more, I don't even want to say surprising, uh, a little more, um, I don't know, a, a little more pleasantly surprised, I guess. Um, you know, given the fact that this was a team that you went on the road to play earlier on in the season, and they um, they did give you some trouble, and that was obviously a, a little more of a raucous environment up there in Chapel Hill as opposed to playing at home um, in a NCAA tournament game for South Carolina. But but regardless, still went out there and um, you know and ran ran rough shot over them. Um, and I think that kind of speaks to where this team's mindset is at as of right now. Because, again, when you go back to the, S- the SEC women's tournament a couple weeks ago, we saw a lot of vulnerability in South Carolina, a lot of issues. And, and thankfully for them, they're able to still make it through the tournament and, and win it when it was all said and done, despite not playing their best basketball over the course of those three games. And you wonder... When you go into a week off, it's like, okay, are you going to um, let those kind of things bother you or are you going to go, get back to work and uh, correct those things by the time the next game rolls around? And it absolutely ended up being the latter for South Carolina where they, um, you know, finally got to really, I think, take a look in the mirror coming away from the SEC championship and say, hey, we won, but we ain't perfect. And we talked about it all season long that, you know, if South Carolina were to have, have lost a game at some point in the regular season, that, that might have been the humbling motivation that that team needed to, to lock in and go on a tear to close out the season. Well, they may not, uh, at this point, obviously, can't have that happen, but I don't even think they need a loss to, to, to be able to have that self-reflection about themselves because that's exactly what we saw on display on um, – you know, on uh, over the course of the weekend. And uh, particularly when you're talking about the North Carolina game and the first half that South Carolina played. And here is Dawn Staley, cut number one here, Dave. Um, when asked the question if she thought the first half against North Carolina was the best this team's looked all year. Um, I don't know. We haven't played like that in a, in a super long time. And we... We actually were talking about that in, in the coaches' locker room. Like, we haven't played well all together. Like, every every single one of our players made an impact coming into the game. And we needed a, a performance like this. And hopefully uh, this um, playing this good of a basketball can be contagious um, throughout the rest of the way. I mean... I mean, I, I I thought we did a great job of just being aggressive um, on both sides of the basketball, just locking in uh, to make sure that this wouldn't be our last game. And they did what we've seen South Carolina do so many times, not only this year, but in, in Don Staley's tenure as a head coach, where they just jumped on them and, and just basically sucked the life out of their opponent before they could even blink, really. I mean, up by 20 points at the end of the first quarter, um, you know, 56 to 19 lead at halftime, which at that point, you know, the game's over. And how crushing must that be for an opponent to know the game's only halfway over and you don't really have a chance, um, at least 
most of the time you don't have a chance. Tennessee did have a good comeback against South Carolina in the SEC Women's Tournament, but more often than not, when South Carolina jumps on a team by 20 or 30 points, that other team uh, is likely to not uh, end up, you know, coming back, um, coming back in that game. In that first half, Carolina 59% from the field, 80% from three, 83% from the charity stripe, um, 18 points in the paint, 32 bench points, while North Carolina was held at 23% from the field, 14 from three, five at the free throw line, no bench points. Um, again, truly just a dominant, dominant performance by South Carolina um, in that first half, which carried over in the second half as well. Um, weren't scoring quite as, as a high a clip. The game was obviously in um, in hand at that point in time. So, um, you know, really showing you the ability of, of what this team is capable of um, at its fullest strength. And part of being at full strength is Camilla Cardoso, who made her return uh, on Sunday after having to sit out game number one um, against Presbyterian due to the um, skir- uh, skirmish, trying to find the right word for it, against LSU the other weekend at the SEC Championship. Cut number six here, Dave. Here is Coach Daly talking about Camilla's return. Um, yeah, I mean, Camilla had a hard time with it, to be quite honest. Like, um, she felt like she let her team down. Um, and she's almost embarrassed by not being able to play. And no, no, no matter how much we tried to get, shake her out of it, only basketball, only getting back out there and running up and down and hearing the ovation from, from the crowd even got her a little emotional at the beginning of the game. Um, she is, a. Uh, I mean, I mean, she's a, you know, she's she's a kind-hearted person, and it was so much unlike her. Um, so I, I'm happy that she got over that part of it, and now we can move on, and we'll be at a, a neutral site, and she can just kind of focus in on uh, what she needs to do to help us continue to win. Well, she didn't skip a beat. She comes in after serving the one-game suspension, gets a double-double with 12 points, and. 10 rebounds, uh, perfect from the free throw line going 4-4. Four, four. So a, uh, a Camila Cardoso-esque performance once again for Camila Cardoso. And, um, you know, obviously her importance can continue to ramp up as this team ends up uh, ends up going through the tournament. But um, they, they did just fine without her on Friday against Presbyterian, which we knew that they would. You know, if this was a first-time thing happening, then it would have been a little bit more of a story heading into the game on Friday. But the fact that Carolina played without her several times during the regular season, you know, of course, her going and playing for the Brazilian national team for a couple of days and then um, just sitting out for, um, you know, some rest, extra rest towards the end of the regular season. We knew that this team was more than capable of uh, winning without having their uh, best player on the court in Camila Cardoso. Um, but when she was out, you had other players step up like Malaysia Full Wiley. And Malaysia ends up having an incredible weekend overall between the Presbyterian game and the North Carolina game. We'll go cut number three here, Dave. Here is um, Coach Daly talking about Malaysia's progression. Well, I, I think with Malaysia's, you know, one, she didn't want to have the type of performance that she had the first time that we played. So I think she has something to prove to herself. Um, and something to prove to the game. I mean, I think she's wired that way. Um, Malaysia's super smart. Like, some of the stuff she does out there, like, you know, I, I thought her passing up an opportunity to, to go score, to give it to, to Breezy so, so Breezy could see the ball go in. Like, that little type stuff um, is incredibly, like, like, she's aware. She's aware of situations that you really don't think her young mind is really thinking about. And then she... And she performs the way she, she does. Like, she's not afraid of the moment, no matter if she's playing well or not. She's not afraid to make mistakes. She doesn't like to look bad, but she's unafraid to make mistakes. And, um, and, and for that, we are, you know, we are, we are honored that she chose to, to make the mistakes and correct them um, on, on Gamecock ground. I, I personally don't think Malaysia Full was afraid of anything at this point in time. You know, when you talk about true freshmen, and, and yes, she has performed exceptionally well this entire season. So, uh, you know, it's not a surprise 
to see her playing this well in the NCAA tournament, 37 points across the um, across the first two games. But when you think about freshmen, it, it could be understandable if they went out there with some butterflies and maybe didn't play up their standard because, you know, the, the lights are theoretically a little bit brighter. You're playing in a different type of atmosphere or, excuse me, a different type of situation with the tournament um, to where you're not having your same amount of prep time and, and all that kind of stuff. So that can throw freshmen off. We saw Tessa Johnson not score any points against Presbyterian on Friday, uh, bounce back with a pretty solid performance yesterday. But, you know, Malaysia Full Wiley, proven she's up to the task with the 20-point uh, performance against um, – uh, North Carolina on Sunday and 17 points against Presbyterian on Friday. And when we talk about the future of women's basketball, yes, we are going through a bit of a transition period coming up here soon with the likes of Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, you know, moving on. But um, obviously the lost Leah Boston uh, from a season ago going on at the WNBA. But Malaysia Full Wiley, if I had to take a bet for who the next true superstar of this game was going to be, I'd put it on Malaysia Full Wiley, and that's not me trying to be biased, um, you know, from a, a local standpoint here, but I just think she plays an exciting brand of basketball. We've seen all the tricks and nuances of her game behind the uh, behind the back stuff and just making it look smooth as silk, in addition to being a dominant player and somebody that, again, as a true freshman, is only can, going to continue to get better as the years go by with the South Carolina program. Um but she's more than ahead of schedule of so many other freshmen in the country. And again, she put that on display over the course of the weekend. And, um, you know, she's going to be a vital part of uh, however deep the South Carolina women's team ends up going in the NCAA tournament. And, uh, you know, for, for all of us here locally, we're expecting them to, we're just, be honest, we're expecting them to make the Final Four. I don't think there's any two ways about it. We expect this team to, at minimum, be in the Final Four because that's how good they are. And they only have a couple more wins to uh, to at least get there and see what happens um, out there in Cleveland with the Final Four. A um, lot happening over the course of the weekend in regards to the women's bracket. We'll dive into some of that. Uh, also going to be talking to Brad Muller coming up at 1030, the voice of uh, Gamecock women's basketball. Get his thoughts on what he saw take place over at Colonial Life arena um but again more action from around the sec women's tournament coming up it is the extra point tower head or excuse me the ncaa women's tournament it is the extra point tower head along with you captain dave on the other side of the glass here on your monday on the game the game network the home of the gamecocks 107.5 the game in columbia 100.5 the game in florence 100.3 the game in myrtle beach also on the 107.5 the game app and streaming live on the game tv powered by integrated media the game tv sponsored by shepherd's glass a true reflection of quality the game tv Broadcasting live from the Herndon Chevrolet Studios, this is 107.5 The Game. A great selection of new Chevys is available now at Herndon Chevrolet. The lot is packed with inventory and more is on the way. So shop your hometown Chevy dealer today. Stop by or shop online today and see why Herndon Chevrolet makes you smile. Life insurance. Why are you putting it off? Can't afford it? Too much hassle? Think you don't need it? There's lots of excuses for putting off life insurance. But if you weren't there, who would pay the mortgage and other bills? With Ethos, you could be covered in 10 minutes and boom family protected ethos fast and easy online term life insurance up to two million dollars in coverage with no medical exam some policies as low as a dollar a day answer a few health questions and get your free quote at getethos.com. that's get ethos.com it's game day at Jim's house, and the spread is impressive. Mike's already done some damage with the hot wings, and now he's dropping back and going deep for another slice of pizza. I sure hope he brought the Pepto. Mike knows the Pepto-Bismol provides fast, five-symptom relief from unexpected stomach upsets. He's no rookie. <laughs> the way he's throwing back those nachos, he's the GOAT. Be ready for game day with Pepto-Bismol. When you have nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea. Use as directed, keep out of reach of children. Hey there, Columbia. 
All of us at Village Idiot Pizza would like to congratulate Dawn Staley, Lamont Paris, and both their teams on a phenomenal regular season, and thank you for the memories. Speaking of making memories, come make some with us at either Village Idiot location, Five Points, or Olympia at the Mills. Together, all postseason long, let's cheer on our Gamecocks. You may call it one thing, but we call it the third month of the calendar craziness. Spring is in the air, and it's the perfect time to give your home a refresh. At Dan's Fan City in Harbison, we're celebrating spring cleaning with amazing deals on floor samples, closeouts, and overstocks. Whether you're looking to upgrade your ceiling fans or add a new one to your space, Dan's Fan City has you covered. Stop by our store or give us a call at 781-FANS to take advantage of these fantastic offers. Don't miss out on the chance to save big and elevate your home's comfort and style with Dan's Fan City on Harbison Boulevard. There's something remarkable about the University of South Carolina. It's in the labs, where researchers are discovering ways to make communities healthier and stronger. It's in the nation's best first-year student experience and top-rate programs in nursing and health sciences. It's where more South Carolina students have access to higher education than ever before. Because when you stand for something bigger than yourself, you can create something that benefits us all. Behold the remarkable we. Hey, Columbia, are you tired of waiting around for your car to be serviced? Well, at Wetzel's Automotive in West Columbia, every Thursday is 30 Minute Thursday. Yes, in just 30 minutes, whether it's an oil change, a battery replacement, or even a tire rotation, their expert techs ensure top-notch service. So why wait? Get your life back in a jiffy. Schedule your appointment today by calling 803-739-2999. That's 739-2999. Or visit them online at wetzelsauto.com. Wetzel's Automotive, their Otis approved. Bill Gunner for AAA Heating and Air. Right now, AAA Heating and Air is looking for people in all positions, maintenance tech, service tech, and sales people. And they're only interested in the best of the best. And they provide the absolute highest pay in the industry. Insurance, 401k with company match, and a new take-home truck, phones, and tablet. Call AAA Heating and Air today, 803-677-1500. AAA Air, when you need us, AAA Heating and Air. What's up, Gamecocks? Ben Cato, proud third-generation owner of Cato's Power Equipment. If you're a landscaper looking to grow your business in 2024, or you're just ready for an upgrade, consider our amazing lineup of stand-up mowers from Gravely and Toro. From the affordable, extremely durable Gravely Z stands to the time-tested Toro Grandstand, these mowers offer better ergonomics, safer hill cutting, and the same great cut you come to expect from a top-class zero turn. Let us upgrade your fleet today. Come see us at Cato's Power Equipment. The Extra Point with Tyler Head and Gamecock Central on your home of the Gamecocks in Columbia, 107.5 The Game. Also heard on 100.3 The Game in Myrtle Beach and 100.5 The Game in Florence. No, listen, man, I'm not, we're not going to let one sleazy reporter distract us from what we're trying to do. Absolutely not. My kids didn't even know I said that yesterday. That team's not involved in this. They were in shock when they saw all that on the Internet. I don't take that stuff to my team. Um, was that the question or did you have a second part? Welcome back in. It is the Extra Point Tower Head, Captain Dave, along with you on this Monday morning. That was Kim Mulkey uh, in her presser uh, yesterday um, uh, addressing the hot rumor of women's basketball coming away from the weekend. Um, this came out uh, around the time that LSU was actually playing Rice in the first round game on Friday that apparently there's uh, some big story that is set to drop um, with the Washington Post this week in reference to Kim Mulkey. Now, we don't know any details of what this story is going to be about. You can search high and wide on the Internet and find all kinds of rumors about different things that people think that Kim Mulkey did. And, um, you know, as, as much as we, most of us around here dislike Kim Mulkey for her personality and for her you know clashes with Don Staley over these past couple of years um we don't know what this is going to be about 
And it could be really bad. It could be nothing. It could just be a story about her, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to speculate because it, it's impossible to um, – it's an impossible thing to do. We'll just have to wait and see what the story ends up being and what kind of effect that has on Kim Mulkey. But but the reason that I bring this up is when you have a headline like this, whether it's true or not or whether it's happened or not, it can be a distraction for a team. And as I mentioned, the, 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 the first rumors of this came out um, – Friday afternoon while uh, she was playing Rice in a game that was a little nip and tuck and a little close at times with um, South Carolina being able to, um, or excuse me, LSU being able to pull off the 10-point win in that regard. But when you go through the rest of the weekend with all this chatter, all this conversation, um, Kim Mulkey addressing it in her press conferences um, on Friday and Saturday as well, it can prove to be distracting for a team and I don't think that's really any surprise when you have something else occupying in the back of your mind is like hey what's going to happen to our coach or you know if this is really bad what does that mean for us as a team um it can serve as a distraction it can throw you off your game a little bit so going into the game on Sunday against Middle Tennessee State I don't think it's unreasonable for people to think that that LSU might be a little bit off their game in that regard well that didn't happen they end up cruising to an 83-56 victory. They um, um, outshot Middle Tennessee State in every single category. Angel Reese goes out there and has 20 points. Four of the five uh, starter pl- uh, starters for LSU end up scoring in the double figures, the one exception being Haley Van Lith with only, um, only four points. Now, uh, again, we'll see what ends up becoming of this r- rumored story where again don't want to speculate we'll have to wait and see what happens see what comes out about it and um you know go from there whenever whenever that does happen um but this LSU team does not seem phased by it and that is the I don't know probably the best compliment you can pay to a program if something like this you know is being rumored um, that they just focus on the task at hand and not worry about it, which seems to be what LSU has done up to um, up to this point. They will uh, be awaiting the winner of Creighton and UCLA coming up uh, tonight at 8.30 to see who their uh, Sweet 16 opponent is. And, of course, they are on the other side of the bracket with uh, Iowa, where if Iowa... Um, who does play tonight at 8 on ESPN against West Virginia, can win that game and beat the 5 seed Colorado in um, their uh, uh, Sweet 16 game, then LSU and Iowa could potentially match up in the Elite Eight to decide who ends up going to the Final Four. That would obviously be a rematch last year's national championship game where LSU ended up getting the uh, the best of them in that one. Elsewhere in the bracket, no surprise, um, Texas and uh, Southern Cal uh, win their first-round matchups. Uh, Texas also plays a second-round game. They beat Alabama 65-54 as they have punched their ticket to the Sweet 16. And then Southern Cal taking on Kansas tonight at 8 o'clock to uh, see if they have the opportunity to take on Baylor in the Sweet 16 um, over on that side of the bracket. And, of course, South Carolina handling his business better than anybody so far. As I mentioned, 179 to 80 in total combined scores between the two games that they have played um, as they are obviously in pursuit of yet another national championship, which, um, you know, is the standard that we hold South Carolina women's basketball to pretty much every single year. And, um, you know, this year, uh, again, looking very strong through the first two games of the NCAA, um, NCAA tournament. I want to remind you about the craft beer card. It has made its return. You can spend thirty dollars at a brewery. Or thirty. You, you can spend thirty dollars a brewery at twelve craft beer locations. Good enough to get you a couple beers there. It's a three hundred and sixty sixty dollar value, which can be all yours for only seventy nine dollars. You can go online to one zero seven five thegamecom dot com. Click on the sweet deals tab, and uh, see your opportunity to purchase the craft beer 
passport card, um, which again is on the 107.5 The Game website under the Sweet Deals tab. Well, no more home games for South Carolina in the women's tournament as um, they move on to the Sweet 16 and uh, hopefully are playing in Cleveland in a couple weeks for a national championship, um, uh, which will be the third in uh, Coach Staley's tenure here at South Carolina. Um, but we'll continue to look back on the weekend that was. We're going to be talking to Brad Muller, voice of Gamecock Women's Basketball, coming up next, next to get some of his thoughts on what he saw out there at Colonial Life Arena. It's the Extra Point. Tyler headed with you on this Monday here on The Game. The Game Network. The home of the Gamecocks. 107.5 The Game in Columbia. 100.5 The Game in Florence. 100.3 
Welcome back in. It is the Extra Point. Tyler Ed with you on this Monday morning. Continue to react to the weekend that was across all of college basketball, including the NCAA Women's Tournament, where South Carolina once again punches their ticket to the Sweet 16 with victories over Presbyterian and North Carolina in the first two rounds of the tournament. And we now welcome in the voice of Gamecock Women's Basketball, Brad Muller on the Love Chevrolet phone lines. Brad, appreciate a little bit of your time this morning. Going into the weekend, when we see South Carolina taking on a team like Presbyterian, we kind of know what to expect, that they should routinely beat a team like that, even in a tournament setting by a pretty hefty margin, which they did. But Sunday against North Carolina was a different story. That's a team that South Carolina had played on the road earlier on this season, and they gave them fits. You know, let's be honest. South Carolina came away with the win, but it wasn't the most relaxing or comfortable win by any means. Were you surprised with the sheer domination that South Carolina showed against the Tar Heels yesterday? Yeah, I, I shouldn't be, but I was uh, because of just what you said. When we played up at their place uh, back, I think it was November 30th, uh, Gamecocks were down by as many as 11 points, I believe, in the first half. And I think that I think that was their first true road game of the year, and you know, and it was a it was a packed uh, Carmichael gym, so I think that may have had some effect on them back in November. But North Carolina had played great uh, in that game, the way they came out, and uh, you know, gave South Carolina some fits early on. But uh, you know, with the crowd in our favor. Uh, uh, yesterday, uh, the Gamecocks came out firing, and it was great to see. I mean, you know, maybe it's rested legs or whatever, but they shot it like they were shooting it back in November, December, January, where they were hitting shots all over the place. Uh, and when you can, uh, obviously, South Carolina likes to get the ball inside, but when you can hit shots from the perimeter, that loosens things up and makes it easier to get it inside, as opposed to when you're not hitting from the outside, they can just pack it in. So, yeah, I was a little surprised at uh, how the Gamecocks took control of that game early but it was great to see and it's just hopeful that they, they can take that on the road with them I played this cut a little bit earlier coach Staley in her postgame presser yesterday was asked if she thought that first half against North Carolina yesterday was the best this team has looked all season and it's very hard to argue with that when you look at the numbers scoring 56 points in that first half alone would you agree with that assessment that's probably the best the team's looked through 20 minutes this year yeah, it was definitely one of the more memorable ones. And again, just because they were just knocking down shots from everywhere. And as usual, it's not just the starters. It was the bench coming off. I mean, Malaysia Fulwiley and Tessa Johnson uh, were just absolutely crushing it. And it was absolutely, it was great to see, you know, freshmen, two freshmen playing in their first NCAA tournament games to just be lighting it up uh, like they are, uh, which is really, really cool. Um, so, yeah, it, it was one of their best shooting performances. Obviously, they did a great job defensively, too, because uh, North Carolina starting five is good they've got good players they don't have a bench um and, and I, I thought you know south carolina would eventually wear them down i didn't expect it to be a blowout so early um but they shut down some really good players there there early on deja kelly uh who was their top scorer was just never a factor in, in the game she came in averaging i think close to 17 points a game and uh she was really non-existent so kudos to the defense as well and talking to brad Muller, voice of gamecock women's basketball as the women's team gets set for Sweet 16 action coming up later on this week. You know, the the women's tournament is, is a little different than the men's where you have roughly about a week and a half off after your respective conference tournaments before you jump in to playing that first round game. We saw now two weeks ago at the women's tournament that uh, South Carolina looked as, as vulnerable perhaps as they had all season. You had the turnovers against Texas A&M. You had to win the game against Tennessee on that late shot by Camila Cardoso. You went back and forth with LSU in that third game. What did that week and a half off do for this team to get them to come out as a uh, dominant as they were through these first two games. I think the biggest thing is rest, you know, I mean, uh, and I know every team goes through this, but when you play, you know, 30 plus games, you, you know, you start to lose your legs a little bit. You're playing a couple of games a week. Then you play a conference tournament where you're doing three or four games in as many days. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just that grind where you just get tired. And I think, you know, I do like how the women's basketball has it set up where most of the conference tournaments around the country are done, you know, two weeks before the NCAA tournament starts and you, you see teams come out kind of refreshed and rested. I think South Carolina took about four days off from practice, I think, uh, you know, just to let them be students for a little bit and, you know, not have to, to run as much. And uh, I think you saw that in the, in the first couple of rounds that they, they just looked refreshed. And, that, and that's what you want. You, you want to see the best teams playing at their best at, at this time of year, and you hope that can carry over uh, into the next rounds because, you know, there, there's nothing worse than, you know, seeing, you know, two, you know, some great teams out there as you get later in the tournament. But if, if they're tired and 
and they're shooting less than 30%, it's not, it's not as much fun. But I think you're seeing that in the tournament, that you're seeing a lot of teams that are well-rested, that are, that are shooting the ball well. I watched a great game last night um, between uh, Virginia Tech and Baylor that went down. It was you know back and forth. It was a, a one-possession game for, for the, the entire game. And I think both those teams had their legs under them. So it was a lot of fun to watch. You mentioned Malaysia Full Wiley uh, just a moment ago, combined for 37 points between the two games, including scoring 20 yesterday. And look, nothing that she's done this season, I guess, has come as a surprise to any of us just because she's been that good. But when you get into these tournament settings, it's understandable for maybe some freshmen to struggle a little bit. Tess Johnson didn't have any points against Presbyterian on Friday, rebounded with a pretty solid game yesterday against North Carolina. But, you know, for, for, for Malaysia Full Wiley, you know, and again, we still got more basketball to play, so the chapter, or so the story of her freshman year is not done just yet, but but how um, how much do you take away from what she's been able to do through these first two games of the tournament to continue to add to what's already been a very impressive season? Well, I've, I've never had any doubt that she was going to be confident going into a game because, uh, she, you know, she hasn't looked like a freshman most of the year. The only time she looks like a freshman sometimes is when she makes some questionable fouls in the backcourt. And, you know, she, I, I I wasn't worried about her. Uh, she, she just has so much confidence and so much ability that, you know, I, I don't even think of her as a freshman. Uh, it, it's a lot of fun to watch. I always like to say, you know, she makes layups exciting, which is really fun. Um, and she just does so many things. She was she, her defense has gotten so much better. I think that's where the improvement uh, has come the most. Is that she she's creating some offense with her defense, which is uh, it's great that she's taking pride in that uh, as well. And then uh, you know w- with Tessa also it was neat. You know she co- coach kind of joked in our pregame uh, interview uh, yesterday that uh, you know Tessa put up a donut. She missed all six of her shots I think in the first round game against Presbyterian, but she actually graded out well because all the other things that they wanted her to do defensively and distributing the bat basketball and you know her guard in terms of who was she, she was defending she, she was perfect uh, or, or near perfect so it was great to see her hit some shots as well uh, and get that confidence and, you know now it's just like any other game you, you hope for them moving on we'll turn our attention to later on today Oklahoma and Indiana squaring off at 6 30 that game will be televised on ESPN2 winner of that will get South Carolina in the Sweet 16 later on this week uh, what can you tell us about uh, both these teams do you have a preference and matchup um, for one over the other you know they're they're both pretty good. Uh, you know they're both nationally you know top 25 teams. Uh, Indiana's a team uh, t- in terms of program wise. Know a little bit more about them just because they've gotten really good in the last five years or so. I think this is their fifth straight NCAA tournament. In fact, last time we saw them was about five years ago. I want to say it was uh, yeah it was the it was the COVID year. We saw we saw Indiana at a tournament in uh, wherever we were in the islands in November, and that was the only team to actually beat South Carolina that year. You know the season ended right before the NCAA tournament. The Gamecocks won, whatever, 30 games. Their only loss was to Indiana that year. And they're, it, while it's all different students, they're very similar. They're very disciplined, uh, full of good shooters, and uh, a team that, that can beat you with fundamentals. Uh, I haven't seen Oklahoma play as much this year. Um, so I, I, I think Indiana playing at home in this one will, will have the advantage. That's who I anticipate winning that one. But Indiana uh, is, is, a, is a solid program. They've been really good the last five years. Um, and can be a dangerous team. Again, di- different personnel, but, uh, you know, th- they beat South Carolina the last time they played, um, you know, five years ago. So it would be an interesting matchup to, uh, just because they've been consistently good for five years, you know, making the postseason. All the matchups going forward will all be at neutral sites for South Carolina as the North Carolina game yesterday was the final one at Colonial Life Arena for this 2023-2024 season as once again South Carolina ran through obviously the entire season undefeated but obviously once again undefeated at home for another um, year. When you look back and reflect on everything that you saw at home this year, what stands out to you most about uh, what this team was able to do here in Columbia? You know, I, I just keep, you know, chuckling that th- this team has done what it's done that so far it's run the table when we, when they graduated all five starters and I, I just laugh because you know it's like I, even though this team has some older players on it maybe they just don't know what they don't know they don't know that they were supposed to you know not supposed to do this <laughs> and it, it just it just cracks me up that uh, they're kind of a they're, they're a very loose bunch uh, while was, you know the previous group was very uh, was more business like on game day uh, this this group's loose I mean if you've ever 
they're if you get there an hour before game time and they're warming up on the floor and they're out there dancing, they're doing all kinds of different things, they're having fun, and you know, and traditionally you'd think, oh, this team isn't ready, you know, they're not ready to play. Well, they're ready to play, <laughs> but they just they just have a lot of fun and they're a lot of loose, and right now it, it translates to a lot of wins, so it's been a lot of fun to cover them. Last one for you here, Brad. Um, again, dominant performance of the first two games against Presbyterian and North Carolina. You've obviously been doing this for a very long time. Can you recall uh, a South Carolina team that uh, outscored its opponents by 99 points through the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament? No, because I, I, I don't think it's happened as good as the Gamecocks have been over the years. In fact, you know, the 2017 team that won the national championship, their biggest challenge in the tournament was in the second round. They had to come from behind in the fourth quarter to beat a good Arizona State team that year. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I wasn't surprised they blew out Presbyterian, and that's not no disrespect to, to the folks up in Clinton because obviously the matchup is what it is. But I was, you know, very pleasantly surprised with what South Carolina was able to do on both ends of the floor yesterday against a, a really good North Carolina team and uh, yeah did, did not expect that I, I don't expect that in you know the rounds coming up uh, you know I just hope we score more one, one more point than they do moving on <laughs> absolutely well hopefully more dominance is on the docket going forward we'll continue to check in with you th- through the tournament and uh, hopefully a good sweet 16 game coming up later on this week appreciate it as always Brad all right thanks so much have a great week absolutely again that is uh, Brad Muller voice of Gamecock women's basketball as Don Staley's crew gets set for Sweet 16 action again either against Oklahoma or Indiana those teams will square off to uh, wrap up the round of 32 coming up later on today at 6 30 um, which you can watch on ESPN 2 we'll come back and wrap up our number two of the extra point Tyler Head uh, along with you Captain Dave producing on the other side of the glass here on the game
said we, we really wanted to win today. Um, I wanted to go to Dallas really bad. All the guys wanted to go to Dallas really bad. But I told them in the locker room, uh, the thing I wanted the most really was to see everyone on, at practice on Monday. That's, that's the thing I'm going to miss the most is just seeing my guys every single day. Welcome back in. It's the X Points out ahead with you on this Monday morning. Real quick reminder, coming up tomorrow uh, evening, have Gamecock Baseball 6.30 start against Presbyterian, 6.15 pregame coverage starting right here on the game. The voice you just heard was uh, Jack Golke, the uh, the star of the Oakland uh, Golden Grizzlies, talking after his team got eliminated in the second round of the NCAA tournament as they fell to the uh, 11 seed NC State in overtime 79 to 73 on um saturday night uh in in the a thrilling overtime game and of course oakland kind of captivated the hearts of america with that huge upset of kentucky in um you know in round number one on thursday but of course with every cinderella the uh the the uh clock does strike midnight and you got to return back uh um and that ended up happening for Oakland on um, Oakland on Saturday against North Carolina State, but I think Jack Golke has solidly cemented himself into the lore of March Madness with the performances that he was able to put up through those two games, and um, you know even in losing on Saturday, he still scored 22 points, was six of uh, 17 from the three point line, played 42 of the um you know 45 minutes of this game so um you know he's somebody that we're going to talk about and remember from a for a long long time and that's that's what's so fun about march madness and the ncaa tournament is that you know every single year or at least we hope every single year there's always this one team there's always that one player that you have never heard of in your life or have never given a care to know about at any point that steps up and have these has one of these kind of performances that we're going to end up talking about for years and years down the line. And that's the charm and the beauty of the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, I've said this before. Is a 64-team single elimination tournament the best way to decide a national champion in men's college basketball and women's college basketball? It's not, but it's fun and exciting, and uh, it draws ratings, and, and, and we tune in each and every year and fill out our brackets and all that kind of stuff. It's just truly become a, an ingrained part of American sports culture, and we look forward to it um, each and every year. And the Cinderella stories are what make it so interesting, which is why, you know, when we talk about tournament expansion that is uh, inevitably going to happen down the road this is why these mid-major teams need this representation because you just truly never know if you're going to expand the team or expand the field out to include more teams we don't need to put in the lsus and the vanderbilts and and the the middling power conference teams you need to put in more mid-majors because you never know what those teams are capable of. And so many of them come from these one-bid leagues where you can have an incredible regular season, lose your conference championship game on a buzzer beater, and don't get a shot in the NCAA tournament when you never know what these teams can do and what they're capable of. And, and again, Oakland is a prime example of that. Obviously a great season for them and more we're going to be talking about for a very, very long time. But, um, you know, I, I think they're a spitting image of what these – mid-majors can do when you put them in a tournament setting uh, against some of the best teams in the country like Kentucky and um, you know uh, going up against a hot uh, mid a hot a power team and in in, uh, in North Carolina State who obviously was was on the ropes themselves going uh, back to the NC or the ACC tournament the other weekend and um, have had to put together seven wins in 12 days which is nothing short of amazing and while they don't necessarily qualify as a cinderella because they do come from a power conference which i am firm belief that cinderellas can't come from power conference it has to be a mid-major they're still an easy team to root for and uh, obviously dj burns has kind of captivated the hearts of america himself with just being a big man that is that is so dominant and so fun to watch that you know, if you don't have a team left to root for in the NCAA tournament, you might latch onto the Wolfpack just to see how far they, um, 
you know, they end up going as with that win against North Carolina State. They clinched their first trip to the Sweet 16 since 2015, and they will get to take on Marquette coming up on uh, Friday, that game just after 7 o'clock on CBS. But, but elsewhere, a lot of the rest of the tournament staying pretty status quo. Um, I believe uh, North Carolina State is the... Yeah, they're the only double-digit seed left remaining. You got Clemson and Arizona and Sweet 16, Creighton and Tennessee, Purdue and Gonzaga, North Carolina and Alabama, Illinois and Iowa State, UConn and San Diego State, and then uh, Houston and Duke. So, yes, North Carolina State, the lone double-digit seed remaining in the dance, and we'll see how far they can go if they can get past Marquette coming up in the Sweet 16. That'll do it for today's edition of the Extra Point. Coming up next, it is the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs. We'll get Wes Mitchell and Chris Clark in here, get some of their reactions to what we saw over the weekend in women's basketball and baseball as well. And lock back in for spring football as we are entering week number two of spring practice as well. Again, all that coming up in the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs up next right here on the game.